how on earth is this a budget phone when you get a super nice AMOLED screen, optically stabilized camera, 67 watts of charging and an insane amount of storage in RAM for just 200 bucks. The price just doesn't feel right, but let's talk about the details and see if this is the right phone for you. Selamat pagi. Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my Poco M6 Pro review. Now it's been a while since the last time I reviewed any phone, so let me know if I missed anything in the comments below. There you can also find my full disclosure, but in short, you are always getting my own honest opinion here and it would really help the channel out if you buy stuff through my affiliate link. So thank you so much for your support and let's get started with the unboxing. So I unboxed this without reading too much about what it offers and boy, am I impressed. Firstly, the included case is not a transparent jelly thing that will turn yellow over time, but here we have a black matte finish case, which feels like a real case I'd use on a daily. The buttons are nice to press, the edges are raised to protect both the screen and the humongous camera bump on the back, and incidentally, I can rest my fingers anywhere here in the back to support the phone so I don't need to use my pinky finger anymore. I loved it. Second, but most importantly, I was very surprised that we've got a 67 watt charger in the box. This, in my opinion, is the sweet spot where charging is fast enough, but not too fast. And the charger brick itself is not too large. It's the only charging brick I carry around and you can use it to charge other stuff at 45 watts including USB-C laptops, which is amazing. The only problem is Xiaomi and Poco is probably the only brand left with this huge rectangle thing. So please just let's leave USB-A for good. Now, I have to be honest with you. I usually never get too excited about budget phones because there's a lot of compromises to be made. And you probably feel the same too. You have 200 bucks, you're watching this video to make the most out of your hard earned money, right? Well, this time around, I can definitely say the M6 Pro is not a compromise. It's the perfect phone for everyday use with all the stuff that matters. And let me explain them one by one. Starting with the build quality. Finally, we have a new design in this M series that does away with the leather textured plastic bag. The body is still made of plastic, but it's a square design now sandwiched by two pieces of glass. Well, at least the front is Gorilla Glass 5, not too sure about this glass in the back, but it makes the phone feel modern. And most importantly, they're slightly rounded on the rim here, so they never feel like cutting into your hand. We have three colors to choose from, black, blue, and purple. And to say I love this design might be too much, but I don't hate it. It's definitely better than previous M series from Poco, but what I can say for sure is this feels very solid in the hand. Very lightweight too at 180 grams and thin at under eight millimeters. Now I have to commend Poco for including everything we could ask for here, which includes an IR blaster here, three and a half millimeter headphone jack, micro SD card support, and IP54 water resistant rating, which basically is resistant to sweat and wet hands, not necessarily rain, water jets and also submerging. That's fine though. My personal favorite is the dual speaker. So not only it's louder than ever, it also has better stereo projection and the sound will never completely disappear when you cover a side like this. Now let's listen to a quick speaker test right now. Okay, hit the thumbs up if you appreciate the video so far and let's talk about that juicy screen, which is one of my favorite change here simply because it doesn't look cheap at all. There's no putting up with thick bezels or the bottom one being larger than the others. And I'm talking about the competition like the Galaxy A15, same price, but look at the night and day difference. The 6.7 inch screen here are so spacious, goes right to the edges. And even though it doesn't support HDR, the colors still pop on this 1080p screen and it's very fluid too because for the first time, we have 120 hertz refresh rate support. Now, because it is AMOLED, we finally have always on display as well. 
and here the refresh rate drops down to 30 hertz to save battery and when watching videos the phone just slaps 60 hertz no matter if you're watching 24 or 30p content so it's not perfect but it's still a very welcome change from the 90 hertz screen we have before and did i mention the in-screen fingerprint reader here finally we have it and as usual it works great but here's the thing what good is a fast screen without the performance to drive it? Well, let's talk about the chip now, which probably is the least exciting part of the phone because we still have a MediaTek Helio G99, just ultra now, which is the same exact chip as the stock G99, just tweak and optimize a bit more. It's not like the Snapdragon Plus series where the fabrication changes and stuff. So at around 440,000 on Antutu, this does perform slightly better than a stock G99, which is good to see. But basically this translates to a just enough daily performance where navigating through apps will get a decent 110 to 120 FPS, sometimes dropping to 90 to 70 FPS when you scroll through a web page, multitasking, doing stuff, and installing an application, it drops quite often then, but for the most part, it's fine. Playing some lighter games like Mobile Legends are okay too. You can put high graphics and super frame rate, and it does play at 60 FPS most of the time, only dipping occasionally when engaging in wars. And in Call of Duty, the settings maxed out and medium graphics, high frame rate, which in the confined space of the multiplayer map plays really well at 60 FPS, very rarely dropping to 50-ish. And temperatures are pretty much in check too, only raising to around 42 degrees Celsius. But that's because the chip is really not that strong anyway. Now, pushing it real hard with Honkai Star Rail, for example, by default, it's set to a low preset, but you can still use medium and it'll play around 30 FPS when you're moving around the map. And then during fights, expect it to perform closer to 2022 FPS especially during heavy parts of skill animations. In case you're wondering, I tried putting 60 FPS setting, but the game runs at 45 max, you know. And just walking around the map, I've seen a lot of drops to the 30. It's really, really unstable, so the chip is just not capable. I recommend sticking with 30 FPS on heavier games like this. Now, if you ask me, are these games still playable? Yeah, sure, but if playing games is a big part of what you care about, I highly, highly recommend saving up a bit more for the Poco X6 Pro, which got a Dimensity 8300 Ultra. It'll give you a thousand times better experience because it's a flagship chip and it's only a hundred bucks more. It's just very sad that Poco didn't send me one to test, but you could help me out by clicking through my affiliate links in the description every time you want to buy something. This actually helps me get stuff to review. So thank you very much and let's keep going. Now, the keyword for the M6 Pro is it's enough for daily use, especially so because it comes with so much RAM and storage inside. Starting at 8 plus 256 for 180 bucks and a freaking 12 gigabytes of RAM plus half a terabyte of storage for 220 bucks. That's the one I'm testing right now and my jaw dropped when I first saw these in the box. Literally double of what we have last year and double of everything I've ever had in my life. And this means it's rare to see apps reload when you multitask and you'll never see any storage problem anytime soon. You can even pop an SD card to expand it and if you're curious, the speed is fine too, around 400 megabyte per second sequential and 30 megabyte per second random. This is UFS 2.2 speed though, so it's hardly the latest tech, but in turn, it doesn't cost as much to get this much storage. Touching the OS experience real quick, sadly, unlike the Poco X6 Pro, this doesn't make the cut for the new Xiaomi Hyper OS release, which is their skin completely reworked from the ground up. It's faster, it's smoother. I've used it a lot in my Poco F5 Pro, but that's a topic for another day because we still have MIUI here. Well, good things happen to those who wait. So by the end of March 2024, actually we got a Xiaomi Hyper OS update and I'm trying to download it as we speak. So that's great news. I will share all my opinion about it down in the pinned comment below. And with that said, let's go back to the video. Now, it may not come as a surprise. This is MIUI. Just turn off all the annoying notifications and you should be fine. And as usual, there's no transparency mode here throughout the OS to drive that 120 hertz refresh rate. But one thing I like is the vibration motor inside. It can still do a little click when you scroll to the top and the bottom or doing the back gesture. This is a first in the M series and I love it. The only thing you may need to consider is that a Helio chip means a 4G phone. And this largely depends on where you live, 
But if you care about 5G, then you may want to look at either Dimensity or Snapdragon equipped phones. But since 5G is barely available where I live, personally, this is not much of a problem. Wi-Fi is where I spend most of my time anyway. And here, it's only got up to Wi-Fi 5, but it's fast enough even until 100 to 300 megabit per second connections. That's with the small b there. Now, touching battery life now, we have a 5,000 milliamp hour here, which is quite common these days, happily lasts the whole day, even with always on display, or even two days when you don't use the phone too much. But what is new here is charging at 67 watts. So 15 minutes will give you 40% charge from zero, and a full charge takes less than 15 minutes. This is the sweet spot for me, but let me know what you think. Do you need faster charging? Finally, let's talk about the cameras now, which seen a huge upgrade compared to any M series before. For the first time, we have not only a 64 megapixel sensor, but also OIS or optical image stabilization. Basically, this means we can have 1x and 2x zoom without losing quality because it just uses the smaller part of the sensor and the photos itself are brighter and sharper too. Videos are much more stable as well. And completing the setup, we have an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens as well as a 2 megapixel macro lens that I have no idea why it's still here, but let's check out the video samples now. So let's talk about the image quality and also while we test the mic and video here. To be honest, I've never been a big fan of their color science, Poco and Xiaomi in general, especially because skin tones, they always look pale and white-ish even though all the beauty effects have been turned off. Their budget phones especially are not my first choice but I do sometimes pick it up to take videos of my son because it's just the one that happens to be the closest to me. But if now this is more versatile than ever, it's much more stable as you can see I'm hand holding this and it's pretty much shaking a lot but you probably can see the video being very very stable and you know what? I'll take it. Now, moving on to the front camera here. I know um, it's not much of a look at, look at my pale skin now. The resolution frame rate are also the same. They max out at 1080p, 60fps. So no 4K, but there is H.265 support. You can turn on in a setting, I recommend you do that, which takes half of the storage space for the same amount of quality and generally is pretty compatible these days. But yeah, let me know what do you think of the cameras and let's get back to the video right now. That's pretty much it for the review. Let me know what you think of the Poco M6 Pro. Personally, I would happily recommend it to almost anyone looking to buy their first budget phone, a secondary phone, or just something for a family member. I know they would love this and never had storage problem. This is basically a Redmi Note 13 Pro with a lesser camera. It's not 200 megapixel anymore, but that means it's a much better value compared to similar budget phones from Samsung, Oppo, Vivo, you name it. Thank you so much for watching. Look forward for more reviews. I'm Kenneth. I'll see you in the next one.